Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, this is uh, the Sports Coffee. Uh, this is the first episode. Um, I'd like, I'm delighted to introduce our first our first um, guest uh, for the show, who is uh, Richard Bill. I've known him for a few years now. Um, followed his his journey, um, and this is an opportunity to to catch up, really, and and I'll find out um, all the different experiences Richard's had over over that period of time. So, hi, Richard. How are you? Oh, very well, Neil. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. No problem whatsoever. So just a quick one. Um, obviously, you, you're currently the uh, assistant manager at, at Solihull Moors Football Club, uh, currently in National National League. Yep, that's it. That's it. OK, so how, how, are, things, how are things going? I know, obviously, a, a, strange, a strange environment at, at the moment um, with, obviously, yeah. the pa- pandemic and the matches being on and off. How, uh, how are things with yourselves yeah no it's it, it, it's good it um as you say obviously you know the, the the covid um pandemic dictates most conversations at the minute and everything and uh doesn't take us long to get on it and 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 yeah it's 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 a tough time because we nobody can get a run you know we, we're playing one game and the next game's off and you know successful teams are built on consistency and and, and good habits and it's 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 hard to get a real run at the minute and that's that's a little bit frustrating but it is what it is and it's the same for everybody and uh we're enjoying um the season as best we can and um uh, i think as soon as we can get a run then um you know we, our success will be uh in the work we do every day on the training ground and we'll be able to see that coming into fruition into the game but i'm enjoying the, the role it's a great club um, yeah. i'm very fortunate that um, i'm working with Really good staff. Jimmy took me there. The manager is fantastic. Learn off him every day. His his, his knowledge of the game is second to none. Um, so, did you know Jimmy before you you got appointed, or was it uh, you know you yeah. went for an interview and? Yeah, no, Jimmy. Um, me and Jimmy worked together at, at uh, the Birmingham City Academy. Okay. When I really first started coaching. Uh, Jimmy was already there. Jimmy and a guy called Richard Stevens. Richard was the academy manager, and Jimmy was like the assistant academy manager, and we got on really well. From, from from that time and then um jimmy eventually went to become the under 23 manager at west Bromwich albion i stayed at birmingham and went on to become the under 23 manager but we always stayed in touch and always had a shared passion for the game and a shared philosophy on how we think the game should be played and um i was really fortunate that when jimmy got the the, the role at solil he, he he chose to, to to bring me in with him and um yeah we're really enjoying it so far Brilliant. So I remember Jimmy because he was a caretaker. He was a caretaker for West Brom, wasn't he, for a game or two? Um, when yeah, one of their managers. Twelve games. I think he did twelve games. Was it twelve? Um, wow. Season before last, and mm. managed to you know steer the club into the playoffs. And they were very unfortunate to lose out to Villa in the semi final on penalties, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Villa Villa went up for the playoffs. You know, so it was uh, very small margins. Yeah, definitely. He's got obviously a good pedigree. So who else is it? Who else have you got in? With you over over at Solihull, have you got an so, experienced James, team? Or? Yeah, James Quinn's the first team coach. Really good guy and a, a really good coach. Loads of knowledge. Uh, real good um, playing background and yeah, um, yeah. you know a, a, a real good guy. And then Darren Carter as well as, as sort of um, he was at Birmingham, wasn't he? He was at Birmingham, West Brom as well. Preston had a really good career, um, yeah. and he's been at Solihull for a number of years now. But he's sort of Coming to the end of his playing days, he's still uh, played a number of games for us this season, but um, he, he's really migrating over to the coaching side and he's going to be a really good coach. He already is a really good coach um, mm. and another uh, excellent member of staff that we've got there. And, and then Kevin Paul's the goalkeeper coach. Oh, wow. So, okay. so ex Villa. Yeah, ex Villa, yeah. A real good technical and tactical staff. And then we've got, you know, physios and uh, sports scientists and an and, and analyst that, you know, we, make a, we feel make a really good team. So you are sort of, I'm guessing with with that team you must you must be full time, right? Eh? Yeah, we're full time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how long have how long has the club been in the full time, um, been able to do full time football? Um, I think three years now. I think the club's probably been full time for, for for three years, and um, that's a big uh, jump, isn't it? Really, you know. Yeah, it's a big jump for the club, and you know the 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 the, 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 the club was bought by um, a guy called Daryl Eels. Uh, two or three years ago and he was at Oxford okay. and um, has really professionalised the club you know um, done a lot of work on the infrastructure of the club but the stadium now is unrecognisable from what it was three or four years ago yeah. we've got a, a, a training ground that would, would 
be ample for a League One club. Mm-hmm. Um, so the club is 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 going places, and um, obviously we're hoping as soon as we can to get the club into the football league, and that's everybody's aim and everyone's dream. And um, you know, we want a bit of people that, that do that. Both myself and Jimmy are local guys, and mm-hmm. James Quinn's local, and Darren Carter's local, and a lot of the staff are local. So. Uh, it'd be fantastic for us to be the ones to take it into the football league and beyond. So before the before the lockdown, what kind of uh, average crowds were you able to to attract? Well, it, it, it's the thing with Solihull, that, and, and one of the things that we really want to work on is 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 um, getting the crowds up and getting the community um, sort of involved in the club, coming out and involved in the club, and it's it's very much a community club. Another guy called um, Tim Murphy has come on board with Daryl Hills now, so we've got real. Two good guys that are both from Birmingham that are really passionate about the community side of things and really want to get the club, um, you know, entrenched in the Solihull community. And it's, mm. it's, it's always been, I used to play for Solihull, you know, um, back in the day, played over 200 games for Solihull and never really been the biggest um, non league supported non league club, but real passionate group of fans that, that have always backed and supported the club. And, and it is slowly growing. And we all know that with results, that, that support will come. You know, there's lots of people that are getting disillusioned now with the professional game. Birmingham City, you know, struggling over the last few years. Um, you know, even even the, the cost of going and watching Aston Villa in the Premier League. You know, so I think we're slowly getting a few of these fans coming across. And um, just a shame that the COVID pandemic interrupted a bit of that. But with with with, with the results on the performance and 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 the way the team playing, and, and with the community initiatives, we're hoping that once fans can come back in. It will really, really ramp up the support in the club. Um, and, you know, I think the fans will really, really enjoy a good game of football down at Solihull. Bring your family. It's nice and close. And that's the aim. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's brilliant. So, going back to yourself and your, and your, co- and your coaching, obviously, you were you were at Birmingham for 16 years. Was that right? Yeah, 16 or 17 years. I sort of wow. lost counting. But, uh, so, you had started, started off roles. With, yeah, started off with, with part time with the under 11s with Nathan Redmond and um, Mitchell Hancocks and Callum Riley that all went to play in the first team. So, and Jordan Willis, who's had a real good career. So, four lads in one age group that, that, that came through. And I sort yeah. of came through with those boys, we under 11s, had them then again at under 14s. Um, so, I was, was part time for about three or four years. Then, the academy manager at the time, a guy called Teddy Wesley, asked me if I'd go in as the full time education officer and um, under 14 coach, which I did. And he used to go out every day and uh, help, help, help with the under-18s as well. So gaining great experience. And then when Alex McLeish came to the club, after a year or two, he, he, he asked me if I'd take on the under-23 role. And uh, obviously, I jumped in it with two hands and uh, really, really enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I didn't look back. I, I did that role for 14 years, really. Uh, sorry, about 10 or 12 years. And then... Um, Unfortunately, what's happened at Birmingham is a lot of the local staff have ended up uh, leaving the club for one reason or another. And um, I was very fortunate to get a call off Mark Harrison, who was the new academy manager at Aston Villa, um, to take on the role of the youth team manager. And um, I did that for a year. And then I, I would have been happy there for a number of years. But Jimmy, Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jimmy called me up and uh, the opportunity to come to my local club at the first team level was too good to turn down. So I took that and here we are. Yeah, no, well, you know, um, you know, experience, experience from, you know, like you say, from under 11s all the way through to under 23s. And then, so what, what, what is the difference on a daily basis, say, with your under 23s at, at Birmingham or the youth team at Aston Villa to, to your daily, not necessarily daily, but when you train with the, the Solihull Moors team, what's, what are the major differences between that? Is it ability level or is it? Yeah, I mean, I think I think um, I think intensity is a key one with, mm-hmm. with that, Neil. Um, you know, as much as you can try and instill an intensity into young players and and and, and to run it as closely to, often to first team principles and values uh, when you're working with younger players, they still haven't got that experience of what it is to uh, play for three points week in week out. Mm-hmm. Um, the importance of that and. And I think that's that's probably the biggest thing. So we're working now every single day, gearing up to the Saturday or Tuesday night game, and it's it's all or nothing. You're yeah. either winning or losing. You know, obviously, um, obviously you can draw as well. But you know, it's all about getting getting the points. And um, 
you know, the result being everything. Whereas with the under 18s and the 23s, while I always encouraged and, 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 and sought an environment where winning was really, really important. Development was always number one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's the big difference, the intensity. And yeah, the, the, listen, the under 23 and under 18 level, there's lots of quality, lots of good quality players, but consistency, I suppose, is with one, Neil, that the lads that will go on to have a career from the academies are able to um, show their ability and their quality day in, day out, week in, week out. And, you know, often the ones that fall away are the ones that can't can't do that week in, week out for whatever reason. So in your in your view, do you think the the, the under twenty threes sort of league as, as such is is a good development tool for them to get ready for you know professional football or or for you know adult you know sort of national league football? Yeah, I, th- I think people are very very quick to knock the under twenty three level, and I understand why. I understand about intensity. I understand about the physicality of it. Um, and 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 to some degrees, it doesn't really truly prepare young players to, to go into the cut and thrust of league football or the higher end of, 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 of non-league football. But it is what it is and the system is what it, what it is. And, and, and um, you know, the managers that, that often say, scrap the under-23s and, and let's have a reserve league, I sometimes look at that and think, well, it's often the managers that won't play their older players in the reserve team, often enough, or in the under-23 team. So if, if managers just all played their, you know, squad players, their experienced players in the under 23 league, then it would become a reserve league, you know. So, um, other than changing the whole way it's done in England and, and turning it into a Spanish model, which would be better, whereby, you know, the young teams can play in non-league. So, for example, Birmingham City's under 23s could go and play in the National League or Aston Villa's under 23s could go and play in League Two and get promoted. You know, if we're not going to do that, then... Managers just play play your experienced players in those teams, and then the, the, the league will become more intense. The league will become more like first team football. So it's all yeah. well and good managers saying, "Oh, we'll scrap it and do this. We'll just play your players, and then it'll be that that level. It'll be that intensity." You yeah. know, often I see I've seen players over the years um, going ten weeks without a game, just play them in the under twenty three, play them in the reserves, and then if everyone's got um, those players in the team, then it's becoming closer to first team football. You experienced players mixed with young team players playing against similar team from from um, another team, and to that end, I think the rules where you can only play a certain amount of overage players, I think those should be scrapped, and then that that would encourage more managers to do that. Yeah, no, no, definitely, no. I appreciate I appreciate your your viewpoint on that. Um, you mentioned when you were of the under 11s that um, a couple, well, four players that came through, uh, which is obviously an amazing feat. Um, one being Nathan Redmond, who I've obviously heard of. The others I, I haven't, but you know, obviously still made still made a, a decent living. Um, out of the players, when you were, I'm guessing at Birmingham, because that was that was the uh, the biggest amount of time you were there, um, and obviously Villa as well. Um, who was the most talented player that you've worked with in, you know, with you when you're coaching? So in your yeah, coaching, hard to pick one because. I was very fortunate. We had a lot of good young players in my time at Birmingham. But for me, Nathan would be the most talented out of everybody. Um, Damari Gray is another one that a lot of people will know of. Yeah, yeah. Damari, you know, again, supremely talented and gifted. Jude Bellingham, more more recently, um, has, has gone on to go to Dortmund and is a yeah, supremely yeah. talented young lad and, and a real good lad as well. Um, Wes Harding at Rotherham, you know, um, fantastic lads. A lad called Charlie Lakin that's currently playing at Ross County that's um, on loan from Birmingham that's going to go on to, to, to have a really, really good career. I know he is. Sure. Um, and as I said, I feel bad naming names because there's, there's lots of people I wouldn't have mentioned that, that are also um, either playing at, 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 at pro levels or or even semi-pro levels that are really, really good lads that, that work really, really hard. You know, so, yeah, really fortunate to work with a lot of good young players that that have come through. Jack Butland would be another one. Obviously, yeah, yeah. wouldn't have been wouldn't have been his specific coach per se. They have specific no, no. coaches, but he played in our team and you know a real good player that's gone on to, to to represent the full national team. So, lots of good young players and lots of good young men that you know I'm very fortunate to stay in touch with and that still call me up and uh, lots of players as well that I work with that never made it have gone into other fields that I always try and stay in touch with as well. You know, it's not about just the the ones that go and play at the highest level. It's about people, number one. And uh, 
one thing I'll always you know, uh, respect is, is every young player and every young person, um, whatever they're going to do. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to see them doing whatever they want to do. But obviously, we're in the, tra- we're in the trade of, of professional football and Nathan, Damari, Jude and people like that will get the headlines and they're, 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 they're the ones that, um, you know, have gone on to play at the highest levels and Jack, so fair, fair play to them boys. And every single one of them um, is, is, is a model and example, a role model and an example to any young player coming through. No, brilliant. So... Do you will you as a as a coaching team link in with young players because we've mentioned young players and under twenty threes into bringing any of those to you know to Solly Hall or is that something that you you're not that's not your model? Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. One of the remits when we took the job at Solly Hall, the, the 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 guys that run the club asked us to to sort of um, you know bring a brand of football that that, that was pleasing. Uh, Obviously, to get to the football league, um, but also to reduce the age of the squad. And, and myself and Jimmy, as you know, um, I mean, I, I could reel off a load of names that, that have come through the West Bromwich production, West Bromwich Alvin production line since Jimmy had worked with them and been there. You know, Kemar Roof, Romain Sawyers, Saido Berahino. We, we are, you know, um, for a number of years, we've, we've been passionate and still are about developing good young players. And if those players can come and help us at Solly Hall, mm. um, one of the things Jimmy says is it doesn't matter how old the player is, if they're good enough to, to come in, then, then we'll get them involved. And we've, we've brought a number of young players in um, from both those clubs, but also from, from lower levels in the league. We've got a lad at the minute called Kyle Hudlin, who scored five in seven. He's a, he's uh, a six foot, six foot six nine, foot nine isn't he? Yeah, literally yeah. It'd been training on the Parks pitch. Oh, um, wow. Was at Bolmere Falcons and Solly, a team called Solihull United. At, at really the lower le- lowest levels of, of, of non-league football and uh, he's come in we've worked with him and it, he's been an absolute revelation Lot, lots and lots of league interest in him at the minute oh, really? age, okay. age only 20 we've got Karen Archer with us who's age 19 from Aston Villa um, we bought online. Uh, he's the online is he the Villa now he's on loan yeah we had Geraldo Badrami from Birmingham City um, who did really well for us last season for the for, 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 for limited amount of time the season Um was not curtailed. They've done well. We had Nick Clayton Phillips from West Brom Javelin. So yeah, we'll we'll very much tap into um, our contacts and and the good young players that there are at, 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 at the local clubs that we've worked at and and with the people we, we know within them. Yeah. What and, about what about your system yourself? Have you got a, a good like youth system at Solihull that you can um, bring players through, or is that something that you you're building on? It's in its infancy. Yeah, the clubs certainly want to go down that route. So at the minute, there's there's like um, a football and education program um, that, 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 that's at the club. So the, the priority of 16 that... 16 really to 19. 16 to 19, educating the players. And there's a football program alongside that that um, sits there. And it, we've actually, last season, bought through a player from that, a young lad called Melis Bushard that we, we've got high hopes for. He's a real, real good lad. Um, but, but yeah, the club want to go down an academy model sort of um, for next season. And... Uh, wheels are in place for that which is obviously a, a progression for the club brilliant it sounds like the infrastructure's there you know it's you know it's and obviously being supported by you know fresh fresh ideas from you know having the the owner from a different club coming in and and understanding the you know the the business model and how how you know football clubs work instead of having an owner who just wants to you know make money out of the club and then you know not hasn't got an interest in you know setting up a say a foundation for the community or a youth you know set up because obviously realistically if you know a club the size of Solihull don't have a youth system then you're just having to pay out for players or loan players every every season on you and there's there's yeah. no sort of longevity for that um, no, absolutely. Absolutely. so it sounds it sounds it sounds like a really good model um motivation I was going to touch on um do you, and the only reason I can uh, bringing that up is really with the stop-start season, and obviously with the season from last year, is has that been an issue for? And I don't want you to name names or anything, but for players, you know, having that motivation to, you know, to get up and you know get up for games again, because like you say, you, you're having one week of game and then you're off for three weeks. You know, and yeah. it must be it must be difficult, you know, for yourselves to not motivated, but. To, to get to get them in the mindset, so so to speak. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating not being able to get on um, a run of games. 
But in terms of motivation, actually, Neil, it's probably increased motivation because okay. players, we all, you know, players and staff that are able to carry on when you've got you know all the key workers um, doing such a good job on the front line of what they're doing. We're, we're very, very grateful to them, and for us to be able to carry on playing football, uh, albeit you know we get frustrated that we can't play every week. You know, it's compared to what other people are going through and and having to deal with. We're, we're probably the most fortunate ones out there, you know, and when we do get, get like I said in the change room last night, you know, we had a game for two weeks. Come on, let's enjoy it. You know, it's fantastic mm. that we're able to get out here and play tonight. And I think, I think it, you know, I don't think we're different to any club in the country. I think players are probably more highly motivated and, and, and feel um, fortunate that we're able to get out there and play during this time. And um, let's just hope everyone stays safe. I think uh, it'd be great if, Everybody at our level is getting tested. That's not happening. So, you know, people will have concerns. It's good that the Premier League are getting tested. It's good that the Football League are getting tested. But it would be, it would be a big help if, 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 if we got tested at our level. People would feel safer. But in terms of motivation, everyone, to my knowledge, is very, very motivated. And as I said, we feel fortunate that we're able to carry on training and playing and, and long may that continue. No, brilliant. That's, brilliant. That's, that's really good to know. Really good to hear and, and, and know that, you know, um, because it must be, you know, like everybody, it's it's a difficult time mentally getting, yes. you know, for, for people just to get through, get through the day for some people, um, let alone, you know, focus on a job that they love doing. Um, so that's great. Um, I've got a couple of questions that I, I put out there over over the week, and I've, I've just got a couple that I want to just throw in, throw to you. Um, one was, do you have a coach or manager that has inspired you Um because obviously, when you're at Birmingham, you know I remember I can't roll them all off, and sure, obviously you can. But a manager that has inspired you when you were, you know, looking up to thinking, oh, I'd love to, you know, do his job in in the future, or or take something from them, thinking, well, that's that's something I've not come across before, and you know, something yeah. that inspires you, as, you know, as a, a as a coach. And and I, I, I genuinely mean it. I think I had eleven managers. Uh, you know, while I was at the club and I can honestly say I've took something uh, from every single one of them and I was very fortunate to have a lot of really good football people and, you know, I wouldn't have a bad word said about any of the managers that that, that I was the under-23 coach or first-team coach under at Birmingham. Um, as I said, Alex was the first one and, um, you know, right, 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 right the way through, uh, Chris Hewton, Lee Clark, Gary Rowett, Gary Monk, Harry Redknapp, um, Steve Cotter was there. Lee Cars was the manager for a, for a spell. Um, you know, I, I know I've lots of different. I'm guessing there's lots of different styles. Lots of different styles, yeah. And it's probably a reason why the club, unfortunately, hasn't been able to um, really, you know, get as much success as the fans and and I'm I'm, and I'm a fan of Birmingham City would, would would want. You know, I think for me, a club's got to put down. This is what we do. This is what we are. And then plug a manager in and out of that instead of a new manager coming in, changing the style, changing the philosophy, changing the playing stuff. You're never going to get the consistency. And um, you know, I think that's where a lot of clubs go wrong. And in my opinion, that's where Birmingham are currently going wrong over the last few years. You know, plug a manager in, plug a manager out, but the philosophy, the way of playing, uh, the type of player, the player profile that you want should never change, really. And that should be a club wide. Um, way of doing things and you'd save yourself a lot of money and I think in my humble opinion you'd have a lot more success in that philosophy but you know if I was going to pick one manager you know and it's, it's all hard to do Chris Hewitt was only there for one season but you know all round I've, I've been honest I think I've took the most from Chris right okay brilliant no that's that's great um, the other one was and this is quite a good one again uh, did you choose did you choose to go down the coaching route or was it just a natural progression? Yeah, I 100% chose to um, go down coaching. I uh, enrolled on a level two course um, when I would have been 19 years old. Um, and obviously I was playing some professionally at the time. So I had a, you know, and like most people that will be listening to this, if, if they're listening to this, they're going to have a big interest in football. Mm. You know, from, from the minute I could walk, I, I love my football. And um, yeah, but, but age 19, while playing semi-professional football, um, 
I went on a coaching course to level two with Stuart Hall and Mark Fogarty as the tutors. And they really engendered in me. A, 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 it was a fantastic course. And they were very, very um, inspirational in the way they delivered the course. And I've stayed in touch with both ever since. And, you know, Mark Fogarty would be a, a big mentor of mine. He's done a lot in the game. And uh, both him and Stuart were fantastic, as I said, in that course. And um, really got me, got my mind round thinking, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to get into coaching. And Mark employed me. I went out to America um, to play and to coach. And when I came back, Mark offered me a job on um, an education scheme, 16 to 19 year old program, which was with Solo College. And I'd have only been 22, 23, so a couple of years older than the lads I was coaching on that with Mark. And um, yeah. great opportunity to drive sessions and to test myself. And, uh, you know, we managed to get a number of those players back into the game. Um, Will Grigg was on that scheme. Wow. Theo, Street, Theo Street was on that scheme. At Street, uh, scheme. Aaron Brown was on that scheme. And all these boys went back into the pro game and um, were successes. So, um you know, it was a great ground. And then as well as that, we went into schools and we had a, a coaching academy, Mark did, that I worked on. And we used to play against Birmingham City and then Birmingham City on the back of that offered me a job and, and, and that's what got me started. So I've got a lot to thank Mark Fogarty for and that and, and Richard Stevens, who's academy manager at the time, who got me started at Birmingham. Brilliant. Um, so just, just a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, probably... One that I was going to bring up, and it's it's a it's an open ended question, really. Um, do you do you think realistically, just with the games going back to Solihull, um, that the league will be completed? I, I, I see I fingers crossed, a, but yeah, absolutely. I think there's a desire for that to happen, Neil, without a shadow of a doubt, and um, only time will tell. Um, I'd like to think 100% yes. It's Christmas, uh, sorry. January and we've only played 13 league games, you know, and some a lot a number of teams have played 14, one or two have perhaps played 11 or 12. It's going to be tight. We're currently due to play Tuesday, Saturday, pretty much every week until the end of May now, which is going to be a big ask. Yeah, I think if the COVID numbers come down and 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 and, and the country gets a grip of of, of 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 what's going on and the hospital pressure can can be decreased, then. I see, I see no reason why not. And let's all, as you said, fingers crossed, let's hope that happens. If it gets any worse, um, then it may well be a struggle. But, you know, I know there's meetings going on as we speak, okay. day in, day out. And um, fingers crossed that, that it will happen, that we can continue. No, definitely. And just one, one last one, Rich, um, from me, um, is how do, you, how do you relax from, from football? My kids, 100% Neil. My, I've got two mm. kids. I'm blessed with a lovely wife and two great kids. And, no matter what happens, I mean, it's a great job. We all love it and we love the yeah. pressure, we love the stresses of it. And mm -hmm. as I said before, compared to nurses and policemen and doctors, you know, we're, we're, it's nothing. So uh, whatever pressures we do have, and we, we put pressure on ourselves, come home and relax with the kids and, and the family and uh, it takes, takes everything away. Brilliant. So, you know, I, I really, you know, I really appreciate the, the insight that you've given us today and, uh, and the people, and the people, yeah, the people listening. Um, you know, I wish you wish you all the best for for this season, and fingers crossed, you know the the Thank season you. does carry on, and and you guys get to where you want to get. Um, you know, it's been you know been an amazing amazing half an hour of 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 insight from you. So, um, I would like to just thank you know thank you on behalf of uh, the Sports Coffee and you know we'll we'll keep in touch like we have done, and Definitely. hopefully hopefully get you on when when you've got your, your winner's medal or you're in the football league. So um, that's what we want. That's what we want, Neil. Definitely. And uh, <laughs> listen, I appreciate you asking me on. I really do. It's very kind of you. And, uh, you know, yeah, good to, good to see you again as well after all the years. Yeah, definitely. Well, all the best. And I'll Thanks, Neil. take in touch. Take care. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Mate. Thank you. Bye Thank all. you. Bye. Bye.